It is time. This is my workshop. This is the armory. It is a room in my basement that is 13 by 16 feet, minus an L section in the corner because there's a bathroom on the other side of that. It has a window in one wall with sort of an escapement chute going up to ground level. I think this is here so that they can technically code it as a bedroom. But for me, it's been fantastic. It's a built-in spray booth. Open the window, spray stuff, leave it out there on a cardboard pallet, close the window for 20 minutes. Bring it in when it's done. Only downside is I can't do anything when it's raining. So that's been awesome, and I'm going to have to design the room layout around that, among other things. But where this is coming from is, we moved into this house three-ish years ago, and it was right before I had a big thing coming up at work where I was going to be on shift for a month and not able to do or think about anything else. The boxes had to get unpacked. All this stuff had to go somewhere. So I used some spare lumber and threw up some utilitarian shelves. Not pretty. Left the carpet, left the walls. All of it is builder's grade beige. Boring as can be. Slapdash construction, but it doesn't matter. It just needed to be functional. And it was, and it has been. I've been able to put out videos using this workshop, but what I have found is if your hobby space isn't pleasant and or tidy or what you want it to be, it's hard to take pride in it, and that starts to affect your hobbying itself. That's what has happened to me several times, and so I've decided I'm not going to tolerate this room any longer. That's right, it's time for a renovation video. We're going to take everything back to drywall and subfloor and build back up from there. Now, the first step of the project I think is going to be the most daunting, which is interim storage. I have to get all this stuff out of here, put it somewhere so I can take apart the shelves and paint the room and do all that stuff. So, the plan is I've bought several of these shelving units off of Amazon. I'm going to build those first, so let me take you on a little pseudo tour here. Let's go out the hallway to the main part of the basement. Immediately to the left, out of the workshop, is a small bathroom, which is awesome. I have instant access to rinsing out brushes and stuff. And then out here is the big main open area of the basement, which includes the 4x8 Wylox Armory table. This is where my D&D &D and my wargaming go down. The plan is to build all these shelving units out here, set them up in an orderly manner, and then transplant all the stored terrain and building supplies and stuff onto them. Then later, once the room is ready, as the very last step, we'll be able to just move these in with two of us carrying them. They're really not that heavy. Despite them claiming in their Amazon listing about being heavy duty, they are not. Do not buy them thinking that they are. But for this purpose, light hobbying storage, they are absolutely perfect. From there, there was no more putting it off. It was time to move out. This glass case houses all of my Warhammer armies, and I committed to myself that if it should ever fill up, which it has, I'm not allowed to buy any more Warhammer figures unless I sell some. So this case has been a good mechanism for me, but there must be two or three thousand figures in here. I have no interest in micromanaging those, so I just cleared off the top and sort of gradually walked it out of the room. Then it was on to disassembly of all these slapdash shelves and workbenches and stuff. Very simple materials there, construction grade 2x2s, some cheap 3 16 inch Luan board, and some 3 quarter inch project grade pine. I am a child of the 90s, and I'm from that school of thought that a lot of you probably are, where your dad built everything with drywall screws. And that's the case here, so all of this was very easy to disassemble. No nails. Of course, since I did rely on the wall for all of this, there must have been 80 to 100 holes that needed repair. First, it's painting, the ceiling. This entire room is builder's grade uh, titanium white. It's really just a light pale beige and they spray it on everything. It's awful, it's soulless, I hate it. Whenever I crash a room, I always paint the ceiling with a proper ceiling white, like a white white. And it is subtle, but it does make a huge difference in the overall final product. I also painted the walls about 20 inches down or so. You'll see why in a moment. 
all of that shelving and workbench material I reclaimed and reused. So these 2x2s form the structural core of some lighted moldings I'm going to make. They're not crown moldings, and they're a few inches down from the ceiling. I don't know what they are. But I got some rope light off of Amazon, and I attached the clips to the 2x2 first, because there's not going to be room for the drill later on, then attached it to the wall. Now you may have seen in an earlier shot that this room has a partial soffit on the left side of the room. And I don't want to have a vertical change in this molding. So that means I went with the worst dimension, which is under the soffit, just a few inches below that. And it means that I've got like 16 inches between this and the ceiling in the main part of the room. And that is why I painted it white ahead of time. At the end of that working day, I just surveilled the hellscape outside. I don't do well with clutter, so this is basically my worst nightmare. But it also served as motivation. I could not tolerate this condition for very long, so it made me work on the room every single day. And in fact, I think this only took something like eight days at a few hours a night. And that's from me sitting at the desk at the beginning of this video to the speech I'm going to give you at the end of this video. The rest of the family was very understanding and very accommodating, but it benefited us all in the end. Anyway, I got this flimsy, crappy material that was the shelves, and I ripped this down into three and a half inch strips. It's going to be used for those moldings, strictly decorative, not load bearing, never even going to be touched. So it really doesn't need to be strong material, just something that's going to be painted white that I can air nail in place. I also ripped one and a half inch wide strips to go on the underside of those cores. Although they're unlikely to ever be looked at, eh, if they are, I want it to be smooth and semi-gloss white, not raw exposed two by material. And they say that miniature painting washes our liquid skill. Well, painter's caulk is pasty talent, covers up all sins, went around the entire room chasing the molding with it. On a test run, it was looking good. I was very happy. There's a few feet of extra rope light. I'll cover that up with white electrical tape later, and it's gonna be behind a full shelf anyway. You'll never see it. The illumination is warm and yellowish and cozy, but not too bright. And that was my hope. I want it to set a vibe, but not blow out my camera when I do wide shots and not be distracting when I'm sitting there at my computer and it's right there up above. Next up, just to get some instant gratification, I went ahead and painted the walls with their color. It's a warm, dark gray. Over all the houses we've lived in and friends I've helped, I've probably crashed, I don't know, 20 or 25 rooms in this way, so tearing up carpet has become second nature. I like to rip it in strips of four or five feet wide and then roll them up. That way they fit in the back of the Yukon and I can run them to the landfill and pay the minimum $10 fee. For the padding underneath, I wasn't sure what to expect. This is on a concrete base mat, but it was just a light adhesive strip in some places. It came up very easily. Baseboards also, they pop right off. I don't like small baseboards. I like the five and a quarters. And I want this to match the motif for the rest of the house that we've done, which is no filigrees, really just rectangular. Also, I put on baseboards after I've laid the flooring. This way, I don't need a quarter round. I hate quarter rounds. They just offset furniture further from the wall, and I think they look tacky. So I always completely remove baseboards and put fresh ones on, uh, bigger ones. I was surprised to see that there's no vapor barrier of any kind. Now, the concrete was bone dry, and so was the mat, so that was encouraging. And probably, I could get away with doing just the laminate directly over top. But technically, you should have a 6 mil plastic vapor barrier underneath laminate flooring, so I did lay that out. And onward to the flooring. This part I usually do enjoy. This design is called Brentwood Pine, and it's from Pergo. I've used other brands before, Bruce, Armstrong, but they're all terrible. They creak, they separate. Pergo is the only one that over, I'd say 15 rooms, they last over the years. So I got to it and uh, it was going pretty smooth, but there's a faster way to do this. You can do it with a hammer and a tapping block or you can use magic. At 
this point, the room renovation was technically done. Not shown, I caulked and painted the baseboards and cleaned that up. And it was time to start moving in furniture, which brings us to this video's sponsor, FlexiSpot. The FlexiSpot E7 Pro Premium Standing Desk is equipped with two powerful motors attached to an extremely heavy, extremely durable base, which can raise and lower the desktop to allow for sitting or standing depending on your mood. I actually considered changing my plans in this project and centering the entire workshop around this desk. After all, being able to sit or stand while crafting would be invaluable. Standing while cutting and gluing and painting is surprisingly comfortable. I could also get different filming angles. Ultimately, I didn't go in that direction and you'll see why later on. So I stayed the course and made this desk my dedicated computer workstation. It accommodates both of my 27 inch monitors and it is heavy. I mean, darn heavy. It reeks of quality. The wiring is laid out intelligently. Good cable retention spots are included, so you get a clean, streamlined presentation from all natural viewing angles. Now, it's not cheap. It is an investment. But if you're a miniatures hobbyist of any sort and you're looking to spruce up your hobby area, this is end game type material for you right here. The base is adjustable and the top comes in multiple lengths. This one is 30 by 60 inches and in multiple finishes. This one is solid wood texture, but they also have dark bamboo and other options as well. So a big thanks to FlexiSpot. I did receive this product from them, but I declined any sort of additional fee or royalty, just the product to assemble and use. And it gets a wholehearted endorsement from me. The previous window treatment was brown velvet and it was an outside mount curtain rod so it just took up a ton of room and wasn't very effective i bought an inside mount sleek gray pole shade this way it can be installed very close to the window and absolutely minimize any light seepage for when i need to do camera work Now last year I renovated our kitchen and that included upgrading to a much larger island, but I kept the old countertop from the previous smaller island. It's a glossy black granite. The lighting's bad here, you'll get a better view later on, but I want this to be my workbench. All right, and for the main workbench, I built this at 36 inches tall. For me, that's a very comfortable height to be standing as I work, but also with a bar style chair, which is taller than usual, I can sit and be very comfortable as well. This, again, was built from material that I harvested from everything that I just took apart, so I didn't buy any new materials. And then it was time to bring in that 38 by 50 inch solid granite countertop and get it up on this thing. Good job. 
So yeah, I was overthinking that one a little bit maybe. Anyways, one final touch. I have some 3 16 inch hardboard lying around the garage. So I cut three panels to size. These are gonna cover up the sides of the workbench. I went to Ace and had them mix up a test pot size of jet black paint. So this is like six bucks instead of having to buy the whole thing. And it was just enough to do all three panels. Then outside, I took a little bit of white semi-gloss and mixed in a little bit of water to thin it out just a tad and then flicking the bristles to get a star field on each of these. The idea here is I want this to look like the purple and blue nebula in my logo. So some chaotic spritzing of purple, followed by blue, then a second round of star flicking, then a second round of the spray paints, this time I did blue and then finished with purple because I want purple to sort of be the predominant over top color. And a third and final treatment of stars. Doing the layers in this way makes it look like there's stars like behind the nebulas. It gives the illusion of depth. And these came out real well, especially for an afterthought. I'm not even sure if I'm going to keep them this way. And yes, I know the suggestion is why didn't you paint your WA nested logo on the front panel? Because I didn't want to. And finally, a few weeks ago, I rebuilt our main stairway and the banister, and I have these beautiful white oak offcuts from all the new treads that I put in. Normally, I save these kinds of offcuts for about five years and then finally decide to throw them out. But here, I came up with the perfect use for them right now. They go with the floor pretty well. I mean, they should because they were from the stair treads. This is where we will make things from now on. Okay, I uh, got some cool parlor tricks for you. Alexa, workshop on. Okay. Nice. Uh, if I want my dragon collection illuminated, there we go. Um, I'm guessing that's gonna blow out the camera, so we'll leave that off for now, but got the dragon collection and the play button up there. Let's see, this one controls the RGB that's behind the monitors. Uh, this one controls the NS Neon logo that my wife got me to commemorate the successful kickstarting of Neon Skies. And this one controls the overhead light. It can do warm light, cold light, RGB of any color, brightness, all that stuff. It can set it on a cycle. So I'll be able to do different effects and stuff like that. Uh, let's leave it on that for now. Now, my cherished dual ribbon LED light is gone. That thing was awesome because it wouldn't cast shadows, but it just doesn't make sense to have it between you and me talking. I mean, this is probably gonna be a common angle. So I have this thing that I've held on to for quite some time. Let's give it a shot. I think that this, yeah, this is illuminating this pretty good. Once we're doing crafting and stuff and the camera's up close, this is probably gonna do the trick, but I'll figure it out. You're gonna have nice crisp video quality, like always. Uh, I've got island power under here for two hot glue guns and the AC battery adapter for the camera. In a happy accident, the compressor for the airbrush is going over here because the hose is plenty long enough. I can put this right here. Airbrush, airbrush. I've got plenty of, plenty of slack. I'm never going to accidentally pull it off or anything. I'm all done. I put the pot right back on the shelf. All done. There, that frees up real estate on the granite workbench, which is the star of the show. Man, 38 inches of solid granite. I am so glad I held on to this thing. I'm very excited to work on it. The height is perfect. I feel very comfortable. I could sit here doing miniatures for hours, um, but if I feel like getting up, yep, this is, I'm at the perfect height to have leverage and real strong control of doing big cuts messy work with sculpta mold whatever doesn't matter it's going to wipe right off this polished granite heck yeah 
So to my right, I've got these two foot deep shelves, which is what the old ones were. This is where completed terrain is stored, as well as works in progress. The two bottom middle shelves is where the work in progress stuff goes. Camera equipment at the far end, right next to the glass case with all the Warhammer armies. And I'm trying to stick to this convention. I don't want junk or potential supplies to be on this side of the room. I pared some of that down to things I'm likely to only use. I, I filled a trash bag. I probably threw away a third of the junk I had been saving. So the rest all fits in these two white drawer units over here. And under this bench, I've got a box full of big hunks of cardboard and like packing inserts and stuff like that. So it's all functionally grouped and or out of sight, out of mind. Got a clear walkway right over here to the spray booth. No more having to lean over my monitors like I did before, because that's where the computer used to be. And one more shelf over here, which is dedicated gaming supplies. Not completed terrain, but like books and dice and minis and all that stuff. Also the 3D printing station. I gave away all of my 3D printers but one, the Saturn IV. That one got the spot on here because the other one simply didn't fit and I'm sick of going up to the garage. I want my whole world contained in this room. I can't believe it's finally done. Now I can do the work that I want to do. I've gotten as far as I have over the past 10 years doing speed build, easy type stuff, cutting corners. I wonder what would happen if I actually applied myself. We'll have to see. I will see you again real soon. Thanks for watching today. I am Wylock. Make things and play games.